All right. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Women's Maximum Fitness Podcast. My guest today is IFBB Pro Alyssa Moyo. Alyssa, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, I, it's very exciting. So you are in a really great spot right now because, um, you know, according to your Instagram, which I follow you on Instagram, um, mm. you are in the middle of your off season and, um, you know, just like it said, no future plans yet. So we're going to talk about that a little bit about what your plans okay. are. Usually, so my first question is, what is your athletic background? Um, what kind of sports did you play as a kid? And then how did that transition into bodybuilding for you? Yeah, um, so I actually didn't really play any sports when I was growing up. Um, I did dance though, so I have more of like, yeah, it, not that that's not athletic, but um, more of like an artistic background, I would say. So. Um, I started doing competitive dance in middle school um, and that pretty much consumed my life. I mean, I went to school and then I went to dance after school and um, we even went to dance on Saturdays. So I was like constantly, um, you know, doing, doing dance and I took it very seriously from a very young age. Um, and the studio that I went to, they took it very seriously as well. So they, they expected a lot out of us. And I think that's kind of where I developed like my discipline that helps me um, with bodybuilding as well. So I danced all the way through college. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So what kind of, what is, uh, what kind of dancing is it? <laughs> um, so we did ballet, hip hop, jazz, modern lyrical, I mean, pretty, pretty much all, all of the um, different styles of dance. Is that something so, that you still do? Um, not as much anymore. Um, I still try to keep like some of my skills, um, like I'll work on my flexibility and things like that. And I, I like to incorporate a little bit of like my dance background into my closing routines for uh, the women's physique division, so. Yeah, it's kind of fun to be able to still use a little bit of it. Absolutely. Yeah, your posing is really, really beautiful. And um, even with your, you can tell, even with your progress pictures that you post, uh, everything mm -hmm. on point. So <laughs> thanks. <laughs> when did you, so you must have at some point gotten into training. Oh, you know what? I want to ask you, um, how old are you? How tall are you? And are you in Colorado? Is that where you grew up? Um, so I am 32. I'll be 33 in July. Um, I'm five foot one and a quarter. Um, and I did not grow up in Colorado. We, my boyfriend and I are in Colorado right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I was born in New York. And then very shortly after, um, my family moved to Florida. So I, I grew up in Florida. Oh, interesting. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how did you get started with like weight training and how did that transition into bodybuilding? Yeah, um, so I've, I've kind of always been in the gym my entire life. Um, my dad did bodybuilding actually when he was younger, like before I was born. Um, so I think that kind of just, I, I saw him and, and my mom uh, was always in the gym as well. So I saw my parents living kind of that lifestyle to a certain extent. Um, so I started going to the gym with my dad when I was in like middle school. Um, and I, I kind of thought of it more as something that would supplement, um, me being a good dancer. So that was kind of the way that I was using it at that time. So I wasn't very serious. I would just go in there and do, you know, a couple of machines, like some cardio, just, I, I didn't know what I was doing, but I've, I've always been in the gym. Um, and then in 2014, um, my ex-boyfriend kind of introduced me to the bodybuilding world. So he never really competed, um, you know, on, on stage or anything like that, but he was very much into the lifestyle. So that's kind of what introduced me um, into the whole bodybuilding world. So, you, excuse me. <laughs> so you started, so you started, hold on one second. 
Okay, so um, so 2014 is basically when you started. So did you get on a good training split at that point? Um, you got some good direction from your boyfriend? Um, yeah, so he, he um, had a good idea of what he was doing in the gym. Um, and it, it, I, I did a split more just kind of like a typical um, uh, like isolation split. Like I would do like shoulders one day, chest, arms, yeah. um, legs. Like it was, it was very um, split up as far as the muscle groups go. So yeah, I noticed that is like a huge trend. I mean, that's how I started too. And I feel like, mm -hmm. I don't know if that was what was popular at from like 2000, um, 2010 to 2014, 15 time. Mm -hmm. Um, because now with training, do you do more of a push pull legs type of a split? I yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I do, um, push pull legs and then like an ar arms and delts. So, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. And is, are you being coached by John Jewett at this point? I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's, yeah, a, he's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So when was the first time that you, uh, that you stepped on stage? Uh, the first time I stepped on stage was in 2015. Okay. Yeah. And I started out in the figure division. Okay. So what was that experience like for you? What did you, um, did you, did you look good for your first uh, show? <laughs> did you place well? And um, yeah, just uh, tell us about that experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually did really well in my first show. Um, my coach at the time, this is kind of funny, was my current boyfriend. So, <laughs> um, so he, he prepped me, um, through that and I actually did look really good. I was, I still honestly look back at that prep and I'm like, I was so shredded. Like it was, it was crazy. It, it was like, my body just responded really well um, just right off the bat. Um, and I, I got first place, um, in my first show in, uh, Tampa, Florida. So yeah, it, it went really well. My posing was awful though. That, that part wasn't good. <laughs> really awesome. So what was your, um, what was your stage weight for that first show? Do you remember? Oh, geez. Um, uh, I want to say I was around, like 107. Oh, so I, was, I was pretty small. Yeah. Yeah. I was tiny looking back. It's, it's funny to see those pictures. All right. So you did your first show. Um, that was 2015, you said. So, mm -hmm. um, all right. So then what happened? Um, so at that point I, I pretty much like got the itch to just like, I, I wanted to keep competing. I, I was like bought in at that point. I, um, I knew that this was something that I wanted to do long-term. I felt like because I placed well in that first show that I kind of yeah. possibly had a future in this and I wanted to, you know, explore that. So, um, I took a, a pretty long off season at that point. That show was like summer of 2015. So I, I just took the rest of the year to grow. Um, and then in 2016, I did my first show. Um, it was the Orlando Europa. And um, I think that was in like March or April of 2016. And I got third at that one. Okay. In figure still. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So then, um, all right. So then what, what was next? <laughs> um, I, I've done so many shows. I, I was kind of thinking about it like before we um, came on and I've done I think 12 shows total since like 2015. So, um, in 2016, I competed quite a bit. I did, um, the Orlando Europa. Um, and then I did, um, one other show. I think that was just kind of like a regional level show. And in 2016, I did my first, um, nationals. It was a uh, junior USA's and I actually did really well. I got sixth place in my first national show. So I got first call outs, um, but ended up getting sixth. And that was, and you're still doing figure at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. My first year in WPD was actually 
um, 2019. So I, I haven't even been in, in women's physique very long. So what, um, what made you transition? One, I want to say is, uh, is getting lean and shredded. Uh, that's pretty easy for you. I guess I would say, I don't want to say easy, but, um, I, I feel like it's gotten harder. Um, the, the more like muscle I've gained. Okay. So it, it seems like every prep has been different. Like, like I said, that first prep, it yeah. seemed easy. Like it just, it was like the fat just fell off and it, it was, yeah, I, it, it was really, well, it went really well. Um, every year after that progressively, like as I gained muscle, it just seemed like it was, we, we had to approach it differently. Um, so I, I wouldn't say it's hard for me to lose fat, but I think like the approach has had to change a little bit, like throughout the years. Okay. That's really interesting. So with I'm just curious because with you competing repeatedly, it seems like it's harder. Um, that's difficult because you're lean, you're trying to hold a lot of times, you know, there's depending on how much of a gap there is between mm -hmm. those and stuff. So I just kind of was curious how your body responds to all that. But um, then, so then anyways, you, so you were, were competing pretty regularly, like two or three times a year. Yeah. When did, you, when did you get your pro card? Um, I got my pro card in 2019 um, at the USA's in Las Vegas. Okay. And that was with mm -hmm. women's physique? Yes, that was in women's physique. Mm -hmm. There were like a couple of shows um, in years before that where I, I would cross over into women's physique, but I was still doing figure. Okay. Like that was kind of my main thing. I had this weird thing with figure where I just like, didn't want to give it up. Um, I just felt like that's where I started. I'm going to finish this. Like, this is where I want to get my pro card. Um, but in, I think it was 2018, yeah. um, I competed in a show, um, at the end of the year and it was just so glaringly obvious that I did not look like the figure girls. I, I still did well in that show. I got fifth. Um, but the judges pretty much told me like, we gave you fifth because you deserve it. And like, you're, you look good, but like, you shouldn't be in figure. So just, at that point I knew I had to transition. Okay. So just too much muscle mass. So what is the, mm -hmm. what was your stage weight at that point? Um, so you said you were like 107 when you started, do you know? Yeah. What, yeah. What was your stage weight? Um, for that last like figure show. Yeah. Um, oh man, I would probably like 120, maybe one, maybe 115, 120. Okay. So I'm actually really not as heavy as like, I'm, it might look, I'm, right. I'm even still like pretty light, uh, for my stage weight. Yeah, your your off season picks are just mint. Like you're, you know what I mean? The perfect level of leanness. You still, I, I just you handled that very well. So <laughs> thank you. Has has that discipline um with diet been um something that just kind of comes naturally as well? You don't have a history with eating disorders or anything like that, it seems like. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't. I yeah. don't. Um, I, my, my boyfriend makes fun of me all the time. He's like, you would never miss a meal. And he, I mean, he'll make fun of my eating habits because I can, I can eat for sure. Like I have no problem eating all of my meals. Um, I get, I do six meals a day. Yeah. Um, but I'm also very kind of like type a routine personality. So I think like knowing exactly what I'm going to eat the next day and just packing my meals and having like a routine for my day is so helpful to me mentally. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not that hard for me to stick to like what my meal plan is even in the off season. Um, but I, I do do like a cheat meal once a week. So that kind of keeps me yeah. satisfied too. Yeah. Well, and we talked about this earlier. I, I feel like I'm mentioning this more and more on the podcast with these interviews. It just, 
it's almost like a meta analysis of all of the bodybuilders because you find out what all the variables are that go into making a good bodybuilder. And mm-hmm. like I said to you um, off camera, a lot of the figure girls are very type A. I can tell just from the emails and yeah, <laughs> it makes you excellent. Um, you know, it makes you excellent pros. Um, and obviously you're not in figure anymore, but even with the fact that you wanted to hold on to that, to try to make that work for you, um, right. <laughs> eyes into your, into your yep. personality. where are you, um, I, with your siblings, um, the birth order, where are you? Um, I'm the oldest. I, I just have one younger brother and he, he's like two and a half years younger than me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which also is very common for um, the oldest uh, to be in this industry and to be um, very successful with it. So that's really cool. So, <laughs> so your last competition was in, um, so you turned pro in 2018. Uh, 2019. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was your last, so you haven't done your pro debut yet. I have. Oh, okay. Yes, I- yeah, I competed during um, the madness of 2020. Um, About that, yes. Yeah, so that that was very interesting to say the least. Um, I did do my pro debut. Um, it was the Chicago Pro, which was October 2020. And then I competed one more time um, at the Arizona Pro in December 2020. Okay, so you are you were in Colorado during the lockdown. So tell yes. uh, tell us a little bit about <laughs> how things were for you over there. Were you, did you have gym access? And, and yeah. Um, so where were you when the world, I, <laughs> I was gonna say, what? where were you when the world shut down? <laughs> I know it's crazy. Um, So my boyfriend and I had actually just moved to Colorado from Utah. We've been all over the place, Um, but we moved in, let's see, I think it was just the very end of February to Colorado. Um, And we started training at um, Armbrust Pro Gym, which is an amazing gym um, for bodybuilding. It's just great. So we we were really excited about that and like looking forward to, getting to explore Colorado and all of those things. And then like a month later, uh, the pandemic hits and everything is shut down. Um, so that was really, really tough just being new to the state and like having the gym, uh, taken away from us and Mm -hmm. like really not being able to even explore, you know, our new home. So I think that was pretty tough. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> Ivana Ivusich and her mm-hmm. Brett train at that gym, right? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I follow her on Instagram and I had seen her posting a lot of like outdoor training and that type of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. So what were you doing for um, training if you, you didn't have the gym? <laughs> yeah. Um, I will be honest. I, and I was actually in the middle of prep too. I had started prepping for the Puerto Rico pro, um, at the beginning of 2020 Mm -hmm. and, and, um, pretty much I just decided to stop the prep at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I didn't feel like I could manage prepping without like having access to the gym. Um, we, we live in an apartment, like we don't have room to set up equipment for like a home gym or anything like that. So I just, I cut it right there. Um, and I was like, I'll, I'll get started after all of this kind of blows over. And to be honest, I did not, I didn't even train okay. for like, yeah. To I guess, it, let's see, things open back up like June. So almost three months, I really yeah. didn't train. Like I would do some outdoor cardio. Um, we bought mountain bikes. So like we, we were just kind of like looking for something that we could do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't weight training and I just tried to do as much activity outdoors as I could. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And it it was probably good to have a little bit of a break, right? Maybe not mentally, but yeah. Yeah. For, (laughs) for my body, I think it was a good thing. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of nice to explore other activities too, even like the mountain biking. I mean, which we're, we're not good at, but (laughs) we tried. Um, so it it was kind of nice to have that extra time to just 
explore different things and yeah. um, actually get out outside and, yeah. you know, explore a little bit. So um, I'm curious how things were with your job, because don't you have a pretty, so what is, what do you do for work and how is that different during that time? Um, so I work for a home health care agency. I manage um, the office and it, it didn't really change too much for us since we're healthcare. So I was still going to work. Um, I, I could, I had the ability to work from home, you know, if needed, but yeah, I was still pretty much like doing my normal work routine and my job is a typical kind of like corporate job. Like I go there eight to five, I have a commute, um, yeah. And at times it can be pretty stressful. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, <clears throat> I saw that, that you have, you have an hour commute to work. So, I do. So you're spending 10 hours. When is it that you go to the gym? <laughs> um, I go to the gym after work. So like I'll, I'll get home from work around like six. Yeah. Um, and then I pretty much for at that point, just eat like eat my pre-workout meal, take my pre-workout, um, and get ready to go to the gym. So I feel like my life is just nonstop. Like I wake up, yeah. um, during, during prep, like I'll do my fasted cardio right now. I'm not really doing it fasted. I'll do it post-workout, but yeah. yeah, it's like wake up cardio, get ready to go to work, drive to work. And like, after that, just go to the gym and start the whole thing over again. <laughs> Yeah, because you probably are straight to bed after your last meal so that you can yeah. mm -hmm. get enough sleep. Yeah, but, it's busy. <clears throat> yeah, busy, but it's a routine that you are making work for you. So right. Mm -hmm. So what is the uh so what's the plan? <laughs> <laughs> um so the plan is basically just to take the rest of this year. Um, as far as I know, I mean. John was like, don't necessarily count out a show maybe toward the end of the year, but yeah. at, at this point, I think we'll probably take the rest of the year off yeah, um, and just continue to like grow and improve. And then like, my goal is to hit 2022 really hard. And um, like, obviously the goal is always to um, qualify for the Olympia. So that, that is what I really want. Yeah. Mm-hmm what was the, or when you look at yourself, what do you think needs improvement or what was the feedback from the judges? Because, um, I mean, your physique is really complete when I look at it, that's what I think. So thank but, you, you know, to be competitive with the women's physique, um, you know, you have the conditioning going for you, obviously something that you're capable of doing. Mm -hmm. um, they are bigger. You would be a smaller, but still complete package. So what is it that you're right. looking for improvement? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so John and I talked about it and like from the judges feedback I got, it was actually more on, on the conditioning end, like just come in a little bit tighter yeah. and a little bit harder. So that was really their main, um, critique that they gave to me. But um, John would like me to put a little bit more size on my shoulders because like your shoulders can just never be big enough in, in any division, really. It's kind of, you know, that's like the thing. And we want to put a little bit more size on my back. Yeah. So those two muscle groups have been prioritized in my training. Yeah. Um, I do shoulders like three times a week <laughs> and then back is twice a week. So what are those? So when you, you say you do shoulders three times a week, is it like, um, what do those workouts look like? Are they different, um, exercises or different rep ranges or, um, are they tacked on to other, um, you know, like, do you, are you adding like feeder sets on as well to the end of, uh, you know, some other, um, body part or how is, how does that kind of look? Yeah. Um, so we do, like I said, the, the push pull, um, routine. So a lot of it is like on push day, obviously we'll do like shoulder press, um, lateral raises are, are going to be pretty much in all of my shoulder days. Um, so those, those are like a workout that I definitely prioritize a lot. Um, and then on pull day, um, we do like rear delts. So it's all kind of split up just a little bit, depending on like what day we're doing. Um, and then when, 
we do arms and delts too. Um, that's mainly just mat lateral raises. So, okay. So the shoulder is kind of, it's all kind of um, split up depending on what, what day we're doing. I got you. That makes a lot of sense. I know that John is a big fan of, especially even when people are doing upper and lower. Um, I tend to start out every one of my either push or pull days with a side lateral raise because mm -hmm. like he always says, you can't have enough shoulders and it doesn't really take away from right. any of the, the strength curve of any of the other exercises. So doing side laterals first. So that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hitting 2022 hard and just really going for that Olympia qualification. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I did well in my last show that I did, um, the Arizona pro, I got first call outs. Um, I think there was 19 girls. I ended up getting sixth in that one. Um, and just kind of reviewing like the stage shots and everything like that. Like Sean and I kind of talked about it and, and think that it, it's doable. So yeah, that's, that's the plan. That's very exciting. And you know, it is mm -hmm. really interesting to just see this new, um, you know, every year we get kind of a new wave of people that get to the next level. So, um, right. Yeah. So do you think that, um, you know, I, I feel like a lot of the women's physique competitors are in their thirties or, you know, like even, um, Evie, was on a couple of weeks ago and she's in mm -hmm. her 40 she's in her 40s um right with your background and then do you think it just takes like that muscle maturity that time to get to that level i think so yeah i think that definitely plays a role in it um having that muscle maturity and i feel like as i've gotten older like it just keeps getting better so I feel like, um, like my longevity in the sport is going to be really good. Like I can see myself doing this, you know, into my forties if I wanted to. So I, I think that it will continue to improve. And I, I definitely think that age is a benefit in this sport, especially yeah. for women's physique. So. Absolutely. I had no idea that you were 32. I thought you were, <laughs> I thought you were younger. <laughs> I thought you were younger. I know everybody thinks that. <laughs> so that's good. That's good. Uh, it sounds like you are, I mean, you're, I, you're doing things correctly because, um, yeah, you, you look young, you seem healthy. And I do think that you have a long, um, you know, a long journey ahead of you in the sport. So that's very cool. Just, yeah. Thank you. Slow and steady wins the race, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so is there, um, so you don't do any like online coaching or anything like that. You have a, you have a good job, <laughs> nothing to plug there. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I always kind of go back and forth with the coaching thing. Um, I would love to start taking clients. Um, but I'm also so focused on like my own bodybuilding too. And then, like you said, I, I do have a career that is pretty demanding at times. So um, but I do want to eventually be able to start helping people like in their own journeys, even if it's just on a small scale, like yeah. just accepting a couple of clients at a time. So, yeah. um, it is something that I would like to pursue at some point. Um, and, and that's definitely been always like a thought in the back of my head. Yeah. So I think just getting, um, the education and all of that, just to kind of yeah. feel like, um, I can start putting that out there is kind of what my first step would be. Yeah. I think that with, you know, your experience over the last several years, and then obviously you've worked with a couple of different coaches. John is a, is a great coach to learn how mm -hmm. to from. So, um, yeah, it definitely could be, um, I, I mean, I'm the same where I only hold on to 10 or so clients at a time because I also have a full yeah. job and it's nice and you can be really picky about who your clients are so that, um, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you don't have a lot of really difficult, I want to say like, there's different types of clients. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so you yeah, get definitely. a little bit more, so. yeah, if you're not, if, 
if you don't have to rely on it for income and it's something that you love to do, um, you know, but you don't have a ton of time, then you can be really picky about who you um, work with. Exactly. Yeah. And even though my, my job can be stressful sometimes, like it's kind of nice to have that, like just something yeah. outside of bodybuilding, because I do think it would be hard to like train clients all day and have that be your main source of income. Yeah. Um, and then basically stay at the gym and have to train yourself. And like, yeah. I, I don't necessarily want to mix, um, work and like my, my passion. So yeah, that has also been a very common theme with um, a lot of these interviews because, um, yeah, you 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 have to be able to separate the two, um, keeping mm -hmm. work from your your hobby and your passion. So, um, yeah, that's very a very good point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right. Well, do you uh, let's do our let's do our ten questions here. Okay. <laughs> You're like, don't like, don't get nervous. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh gosh, what is she going to ask me? <laughs> oh, um, so what is your music style? Um, country rock or rap when you're going into the gym? Oh boy. Uh, out of just the three of those. Yeah. Or what, I would, is, I don't, what do you or like? Anything? To do? Um, yeah. So I, I would, out of the three of those, definitely more rap. <laughs> okay. Um, and, but personally, I like, I like to listen to like EDM, so oh. kind of like electronic, um, yes. that, that style of music. So okay. that's typically what I'll listen to, like when I'm training or doing cardio. Got you. Got you. <laughs> I know there's plenty of other stuff. And like, I like listening to like Latin dance music sometimes too. Like I just <laughs> like that club, um, yeah, I think what got me, uh, so what kind of like TV shows do you watch? Do you ever watch TV or um, Netflix binging or anything like that? <laughs> um, I will occasionally watch, um, I'll, sometimes I'll get hooked on like a Netflix show. It, I'm not that into TV. Um, a lot of times like my boyfriend will get annoyed at me because like we'll be trying to watch something and I'll fall asleep. Um, <laughs> So, um, I'm, I'm not like super into watching TV, but we watched a lot of like the murder mystery shows, like the Datelines and, um, I don't, I don't even know, but, um, the, the, you know what I mean? Those types of shows. Yeah. Um, and like right now we're watching, this is going to sound so bad, but like married at first sight. So like some of these like reality shows, um, oh, yeah. I'll do. Yeah, like just kind of mindless like TV watching. Anything yeah. I have to focus like too much on, it's yeah, it's usually not good because I'm I'm always so busy and like I'll be like doing dishes, watching TV and stuff like that. So it needs yeah. to be pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally get you. That's kind of where I was going because I like. Um, did you ever watch Dexter? Um, I I have seen some of it, but I never like finished it. Okay, so the I love the uh, the music in that just runs through that, and because it takes place in supposedly in Florida, there's yeah. a lot of that Latin type of music and club music and that <laughs> stuff that goes. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's terrible. Like the whole theme songs of like that is very soothing to, <laughs> to me about you know a oh, serial killer, but um, right. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, do you, again, I mean, this is tough with time. I always ask the question just because sometimes people put out a good um, book there, but do you have a latest favorite read or just a favorite read? Um, um, let's see. I need to be better about reading books. I have like, I'll like buy books and then not read them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so I don't recently, like I really haven't been very good about reading books. <laughs> Okay. Um, I, I started, um, and I'm not even sure how to say the name of the author, like 100% correct, but Eckhart Tolle, um, A New Earth. It's, oh, yeah. it's just kind of, yeah, that, that one I've started, I've not finished it, but okay. there's like just really good kind of like insight into the world and um, kind of how to, um, I guess, like tap into yourself and not like not let all of the um, things going on around you kind of stress you out, I guess. 
So, yeah. and that, that's something that I'm, I'm always like trying to work on. So that, that book has, has been good. It's tough just being like alive and trying to relax. You know what I mean? You, mm -hmm. you're constantly, just the world today, you're just constantly stimulated. You're constantly being, yeah, it's just go, go, go. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. All right. So, um, do you guys have any animals, dogs or cats? Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, my boyfriend and I have a pit bull. Um, his name is Cujo and he's, uh, he'll be three in June and he's just the sweetest dog ever. Like we're, we're obsessed with him. I mean, other than besides bodybuilding, like that's, that's the other, that's our other main kind of like focus in life. So <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I, I'm a big animal fan too. That's one of the perks of my job, which is really, it's kind of dumb, but I do see dogs all day running through, like I clean these buildings and um, yeah. Yeah. And I see dogs all day. It's probably the <laughs> day. <laughs> yeah I mean there's they're so good for just like stress relief and I'm yeah. um, just kind of cheering you up so yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely um heels or sneakers oh sneakers for sure <laughs> nice um, yes yeah I'm not a heels person <laughs> but you I I think there's not a girl who hasn't been on here who is a figure girl who's like, I hate wearing heels. And I'm like, you, you do figure. You know? Right. <laughs> Which you were probably pretty happy when you transitioned out of figure to drop those heels, right? I was. Yeah, that was a big perk for me. Yeah, I, I feel like I never, even in all the years that I did figure, never got fully comfortable like walking in those heels. So, yeah. mm -hmm. it's, it's hard. They're, I mean, they're freaking stripper shoes, man. They're, yeah. <laughs> get your yep. and like and when you're trying to practice posing with them at the beginning in your off season and your feet are like stuffed in them like sausages mm -hmm. you know, I know like a practice pair that you basically ruin yeah yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> um hike a mountain or swim in an oasis an oasis um, I would say swim in an oasis, <laughs> even though I live in Colorado and we have mountains and hiking. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I've tried like hiking a little bit before, not even major hiking. And it freaks me out. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> what, what, what is it about it that freaks you out? Um, just depending on like how high it goes and oh. like, if there's no, um, if it's just like a drop off on both ends like that, no. mm -mm, I, I do not want to yeah. do that. <laughs> That's yeah, that is super relatable. I think if I have any, like, do you have any other, do you have any other phobias? I should ask that question. Cause it's actually pretty. Oh, That's a good one. Um, <laughs> oh, phobias. Oh, geez. Um, like the dark or trying to think. Sometimes I get like, um, it's not really a phobia, but like if there's a lot of people around, like I can get like overwhelmed or like yeah. anxious. So sometimes um, just like highly like stimulating situations where there's a lot going on kind of like freaks me out. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's pretty, that, that's definitely relatable for sure. Yeah. I, if I'm in a big room where I don't know people like that, and there's a lot of people talking, I I'm, I'm like quiet. I'm like totally assessing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, yeah, that's how I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's very, yeah. Weird. I'm not usually one that's going to like approach somebody else to talk to them. Yeah. Um, just because I'm, I'm pretty shy. Um, yeah. so, but if somebody else approaches me, and they make me feel comfortable, then, yeah. then I'm good. Yeah. So. You know, it's funny because that's, that's something that's always been really hard for me, but something I go out of my way to do as far as like, especially with like complimenting people and stuff, because uh, I'll tell you a quick story, like long time ago when I, I was going school shopping with my mom in high school mm -hmm. and we had gone through like the cash, like we had bought this stuff. And I said to my mom afterwards, I was like the I said, did you see that cashier? She had such pretty eyes. And my mom was like, why didn't you tell her that? And I was like, yeah. 
oh, and she's like, you know, she may never have, you know, like that might be the only compliment she hears all day or whatever. Right. So, like I went back and told her and then um, it just made me think like, oh, when you have something nice to say to somebody, even if it's outside your comfort zone to go out of your way is it's worth the risk, you know? Exactly. And you, you always feel good. Like after you do something like that. So it, yeah. it is worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if you're like blood pressure goes. <laughs> I know. I feel like I always have to like work myself up to, you know, do stuff like that. It's so, it's so weird. <laughs> yep. yep. And it, in the way society is set up now, it's even harder. And with us, like, are you guys wearing masks a lot still in your state? Um, we, yes, it's still like a mandate to wear masks. I mean, yeah. but we're not, you know, if we can get away with not wearing one, like we will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. um but yeah we we still like if we go grocery shopping and stuff like that we have to wear one yeah I have two like my when I go to planet fitness and train we have to wear them but my other gym we don't have to wear them which is not mm -hmm. easy either right certain things I think are ridiculous because like we had my daughter had a soccer game last night too and it was outside and you have to wear mm -hmm. masks in certain areas and I'm like oh are, really like yeah I was like, no, like, I just, I mean, I just didn't, I'm not really one to like break rules, but I was like, no, I am not wearing a mask outside, yeah. you know, especially the other time we were out there, it was like, it was like 30 degree winds going on. I'm just like, nobody's catching Corona from anybody. Yeah. Like, I always think it's funny. Like when we walk our dog and we see people biking, just even completely alone or walking alone and they've got their mask on. Or they'll like have it down. And then if we walk by them, they'll like pull it up really quick. Um, it, I don't know. It's just really interesting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I understand like you want, I don't want to make somebody else uncomfortable, but like, yeah. you know, like even at the soccer game last night, we were, we didn't go into the stands and, you know, I was six feet from anybody. So I'm like, even, mm -hmm. but it's so crazy when you start thinking about yeah, you're like, you're not gonna yeah. from the wind. <laughs> so, all right. Um, let's see, what is your favorite body part to train? Um, my favorite, I, I think just shoulders, honestly. Like I love um my push day. Yeah. Um, so like chest and shoulders. I, I love doing. So I don't I don't do a whole lot of chest. Um, it's not like a big priority. Yeah. Um but my chest is actually pretty dominant still. Um, so just because I'm, I'm good at it, I, I like doing it. And then my shoulders, I never used to really like training. Um, but since like we've made them such a big priority, even over the last couple of years, they've gotten so much stronger and I've just seen the improvement in them. Um, so I, I really like training shoulders too. Yeah. I feel like you don't get you don't get a pump anywhere else like you do with shoulders like you definitely mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so, yeah yeah <laughs> the reward of training your shoulders that great pump I um, know I love it <laughs> <laughs> um burgers pizza or su sushi what's your go-to <laughs> oh gosh um probably pizza yeah yeah <laughs> well, you know that, I mean I don't want to stereotype you but <laughs> You do have that Italian background. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I like all three of those things. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll kind of like get on different kicks. So like there's certain times where we'll be on like a sushi kick and like we're always wanting sushi. But um, I would say consistently, even over the past like couple of years, as far as cheat meals, like I, I want pizza. So yeah. <laughs> That's nice. That's like a John and Renee thing though. It probably rubbed off on you. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I know they like doing their like homemade pizzas and stuff. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it is like kind of the hardest one to fit in in a sort of a healthful manner just because the protein is so low. Exactly. Yeah. And there's so many different ingredients that you can add to it. It, it is kind of hard to make it fit. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see all right so um okay so this is the, the always the thinker question but so three so three people or three 
you know, or maybe a group of people or whatever it is, but one you admire, one who inspires you and one who motivates you. Oh gosh. Um, okay. So one who inspires me, one who motivates me. And then what was the other one? And one who you admire someone you, admire. okay. Um, as far as admire, I would, I'll keep it in the sport. Um, Natalia Coelho. Like I, I seriously admire her. I think she's amazing. Um, like her work ethic is just crazy. And um, like she's in school and getting like a 4.0 yeah. doing bodybuilding at this level. Um, yeah. she stays in great shape. I mean, pretty much year round, like she just seems like a machine to me. So that that's one person that I, I would say that I admire. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so who inspires you? Um, as far as inspiration goes, um, I'm just going to sound super cliche, but probably my mom. No, it's awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, my mom has like always just been really supportive of me, like no matter what I'm doing, like whether it's dance or bodybuilding, like she's gone to just about all of my shows. Um, she's been great, like throughout the, the whole thing. Um, so yeah, I, I think that she's a person that that definitely inspires me, awesome. mm -hmm. makes me just want to like be my best. And like she's always set kind of like high expectations for me and my brother growing up. And yeah. um, so I think she's a huge part of kind of like any success that I've had. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, so who motivates you? Um, my boyfriend, Nate, definitely is like a huge motivator for me. Um, like I said, um, even like before we started dating, like he coached me through like some of my preps and everything. And then even while we were dating, um, prep me for some shows, um, before I started working with John. Um, and I feel like he's like my, like motivating me every single day. Um, he's like my counselor, um, <laughs> and my training partner and all, like pretty much everything like wrapped into one. Um, the amount of like stuff that I tell him or like maybe complain about or, you know, just what, whatever it's always like, he always has like something, um, kind of motivating to, yeah. to say and to make me feel better. So that's awesome. I know it's really great when I love seeing the couples, you know, working together because, mm -hmm you know, you just know, like they decided that this is the lifestyle you're going to make work for you and you mm -hmm. each other. So it's really, yeah. Cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, all right. So what has been your best moment in life so far? Oh, wow. In life. Um, hmm. Oh gosh, there could be so many things and I'm not sure if I should I, I guess I'll, I'll relate it with, I'll relate it to bodybuilding. Um, I think so far, like my best moment was at the Arizona pro in December. Um, like I would say getting my pro card, cause that's just like amazing too. But I was so happy in my, it was my second pro show to get first call outs. Like I was just, yeah, I was so like proud and, and kind of surprised, um, at the same time. So it was, it was just a really good feeling. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it, it tells you that you're headed in the right direction. So that's mm -hmm. a, a great confirmation as well. Yeah. So, um, what is your favorite thing about social media and the worst thing about social media? Oh, um, favorite thing is that it's kind of a way I, I feel like nowadays, like everybody kind of has to have a social media to, um, network and create like opportunities for yourself. So I just see there, there's so many opportunities out there that like you wouldn't have if it wasn't for social media, whether that's like sponsorships or, um, you know, any, anything like that. Um, so I would say like the networking aspect is, is really cool. And the opportunities that it brings, 
Um, the worst part is there, I, I think the worst, like kind of outweighs like the, the better stuff with social media. Um, it's like a time sucker. Like you get, I mean, just like anything else, you get addicted, you know, yeah. to using social media. So I'll find myself like just mindlessly scrolling through Instagram or whatever. Like yeah. even if I'm watching a TV show, like during the commercials, like I feel the need to like pick up my phone and start scrolling through Instagram. But yeah. why? I mean, yeah. I, so I feel like it's such, it's something that takes us out of like um, the present moment yeah. um, in our actual life. And, and I find myself like not being in the moment as often as I should be and like just enjoying what I'm doing. Yeah. Or, you know, you try to capture, like you said, you'll try to capture a moment through a lens Mm -hmm. rather than just, you know, because you're like wanting to hold on to that memory. But I know I've been thinking about it a lot more because it's different people approach social media um, differently. And one of those things is if you go, you know, if you're a little bit more disciplined, you know, and decide like, hey, I'm not going to get on social media and scroll a whole lot. When you'll see like, something and you'll be like oh I almost missed that I mean like this is an extreme but like somebody passes away in the bodybuilding industry and like you don't know so it is kind of your source of information Mm -hmm. I guess that whole fear of missing out type of a thing that you're going to miss something that's right yeah yeah it is it's interesting and I I don't know where you know where society is headed as far as because it's just such a um it's such a powerhouse so I think Mm -hmm. people have to be like you said disciplined but you know it goes back to too like the type of tv that you watch or that I watch too it's we're always looking for something to try to distract us from how stressful life is (laughs) yeah yep (laughs) it, it serves it's yeah, the creators, ugh, diabolical. <laughs> yes, yep. <laughs> oh, the other one I was thinking was snapped, and I couldn't, I couldn't think of the name of it like before when we were talking. But yeah, <laughs> oh, snaps is, is another good one. <laughs> what is that? What What's that about? It's like, <laughs> um, it's typically about like a female who. <laughs> <laughs> like just freaks out like whether the husband like cheated on her or whatever the situation is with with a man and they usually like kill the guy <laughs> oh wow yeah I always I, well it's funny too I think you have a similar um you know I guess I don't know if it's a passion but I I'm really fascinated <laughs> by um human behavior not really yeah like, it's not like, oh, I need to know the gory details of somebody killing, which is kind of, you know, Dexter does that a little bit. Or right. Criminal Minds was real, gets really dark. But like, I just love like, what makes this person tick? You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What yes. would make you, <laughs> you know, like I've been <laughs> angry before, but never. <laughs> oh yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. It is, it is interesting to think about, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think it's hard to relate to people like that. Like if you don't have that in you, obviously it's like, you're not going to understand how they could be that way. (laughs) Well, that's the fascination with human behavior. Cause when you hear people explaining why they do stuff, you like a lot of times you're just like, I would never. Right. Can't (laughs) wrap my brain around this one. No, that's not how it works. (laughs) So, um, yeah, super interesting. All right. Well, um, oh, I know I was going to ask you last question. So who okay. do you like to see interviewed um, on the podcast? Yeah. Oh, geez. That is a good question. Um, I was kind of thinking about it because I was like going through um, some of the other like people that you've interviewed and like watching the podcast and all of that. Um Awesome. I think, I think it'd be awesome to see, um, it's another client of John's, um, yes. Ashley, I, I hope I say her last name correctly. Oh, Lakamowski. Yeah. Uh, on IG, she's like fittest stash ever. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so I did actually very early on, I had a, a podcast scheduled with her and then she had to reschedule. Well, she had to cancel and I've, yeah. so it's, I love hearing that. And I will try to, um, it's, 
it sucks in my position because I don't want to badger people because I figure like if they wanted to do it, they would make time or whatever. Right. So mm -hmm. I do know that they are really busy. Like, um, who was it who had asked? I don't remember who it was who was like, oh, Renee should be on the show. And I'm like, yep, I asked her and she is really busy too. So I definitely yeah. will try to get, um, you know, some of the people that people keep asking about, um, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, and, and it doesn't really, I'm not saying it doesn't benefit them, but some of them are such big names. Like this would like, I was thinking about that for Renee, like this would be a step down from her, you know, animal. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can have like amazing people on this podcast. So yeah. <laughs> well, thanks. I, I hope it continues to grow because it's been really fun. And um, it is great just getting to know the athlete behind, you know, the athlete behind the athlete. So yeah. 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 There's always, it seems like um, when you just see people on Instagram, it's, it's kind of deceiving. It's not always yeah what yeah. you would think that person is like, like once you actually get to see them on something like a podcast. So yeah. Yeah. Sure. It's really cool. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that gives, that gives me hope. I'll keep going. <laughs> yes. You should. <laughs> it all. So, um, I know, and I reached out to, um, Natalia as well. So, I mean, she's another, you know, I think once you, I hate to correlate it with Instagram followers, but when you're over like 500,000 Instagram followers, you're just like, mm, do you even <laughs> see my email? <laughs> like, doing my best. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's crazy. Some, I wonder sometimes I'm like, how do these people have so many followers? It's just, it's yeah. insane. <laughs> yeah. Well, but when you look at, I don't know how many Natalia has, but like, look at somebody like Renee, she just mm -hmm. like, like surreal looking that she's so, you know, oh yeah, mm -hmm. perfect and beautiful and all that stuff. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here fangirling. So, anyways, <laughs> yeah, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of people, and I just keep shooting for them. And sometimes I get, you know, the new people who are just coming up, which I, it's like I, yeah, I enjoy all the interviews because mm -hmm. everybody has a really cool story. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, Alyssa, this has been really awesome. And um, yeah, I hope that you uh, have a <laughs> good rest of your day. <laughs> thanks for your, yes. Thanks for your time. Thanks. We will, you know, keep following you. Um, keep following you on Instagram and watching your progress. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for having me on. Yeah. No, my yeah. pleasure. So, mm -hmm. um, so what is your, your Instagram is a M M F I T seven, one, seven. Yeah. One seven. Okay. All right. So a, like a M M fit one seven. Yeah. Okay. All right. So find, um, you can find you on Instagram there. My Instagram is buffcake22. You can follow the podcast at Women's Maximum Fitness. Um, subscribe, like, leave awesome reviews on iTunes. That gets the show out to more people. And um, we continue to support all these wonderful women in the bodybuilding industry. So cool. So thanks again for your time. Oh, and to remember that uh, healthy looks different on everybody. So yes. Have a mm -hmm. great day. <laughs> Thank you. You too. <laughs> Bye.